Hey, I've got a couple of riddles for you today, but those are hard, so start your brain engine and let's go! There was once a magical forest, inhabited by elves and gnomes. Since they didn't get along very well, they lived in two different parts of the forest to avoid all conflict. One day, centaurs invaded the forest, and elves and gnomes were forced out, running in different directions. Let's follow a small group of six creatures, three elves and three gnomes. They ran west, but unfortunately, they stumbled across a lake. None of them could swim, but luckily, there was a raft. The raft could only carry two creatures at once. Two elves, two gnomes, or one elf and one gnome. So you need to figure out a way for all of them to cross the lake safely. Now, here's the problem. If there are more gnomes on one side than elves, they will attack them. Even if an elf is on the raft, but not in the part of the lake where there are more gnomes than elves, it's still not safe. Can you figure out a way for them all to cross the lake safely? Okay, so here are five possible first steps. One elf crosses the lake, or one gnome, or two elves, two gnomes, or one elf and one gnome. But it doesn't make any sense to cross the lake alone, since they need to send the raft back somehow. So those two options are out. Two elves can't cross the lake together, because then the third elf will be left alone with three gnomes, and they will attack him. So it's either two gnomes crossing the lake first, or an elf and a gnome. So let's go with the two gnomes. So two of them cross the lake, and of course, one of them has to come back. Now what? Two elves can't leave together because the third one is in danger. If an elf and a gnome leave together, then the one who is leaving will be in danger as soon as they cross the river. So two more gnomes leave together, and then one comes back. An elf and a gnome can't leave together because then there will be three gnomes and one elf on the other side. So this time, two elves cross the lake together. Who comes back? Not an elf, because the other one can't be left alone there. A gnome can't go back alone. Otherwise, there will be two gnomes and one elf on the first shore. So, a plot twist. An elf and a gnome come back together. Now, two gnomes can't cross the lake. An elf and a gnome can't go either. So, the two remaining elves go to the other shore together. None of them can now return since there are two gnomes left on that shore. So, a gnome will return to pick up one of his buddies. Then another gnome will go to pick up the last gnome. But it's not the only solution. You could also succeed by sending a gnome and an elf together as a first move. Here's a graph of how it would play out. But remember, no matter how far you travel, there's no place like gnome. Okay, great job! Now it's time for the second riddle, and this one comes from Esme. This girl often goes for a walk in a forest and typically gets lost. This time, though, she doesn't get lost. Here's her way home, but she's tempted to go visit her old friend, a witch, who lives in that forest. Esme has an amazing <laughs> riddle, and it's pretty hard, so she thinks she has a good chance of winning the witch's cat. So, Esme goes to the witch's house and offers the following. I bet you can't solve my riddle. If I'm right, your cat will go home with me. The witch believes she can solve any riddle, so she takes that risk. Esme puts a big, acute triangle on the table. Here, you can make seven cuts to make this triangle disappear. Every piece you cut off that is an acute triangle will disappear. But if a triangle has an angle that is right or obtuse, that piece will stay. Once again, seven cuts, and you have to make the whole triangle disappear. Not a single smallest piece can be left. So, how can the witch do that and keep her cat? Whenever you make a cut, it'll either produce two right angles or an acute and obtuse angle. The witch seems to be doomed, but then she looks at the pizza she hasn't finished. When you cut into more than four pieces, all angles are acute. The problem is that a pizza is round, and we're dealing with a triangle. Still, the trick also works with other shapes, like hexagons and pentagons. Good for the witch, she can make a pentagon out of this acute triangle by making just two cuts. 
The small cut-off triangles are acute, and they disappear. Now, the witch needs to deal with the pentagon like she does with a pizza. Cut it into five pieces using the last five cuts. That's a success story. Hey, we know you like the cat, Esme, but maybe get one of your own. Okay, do you think you can crack another one? I promise it's the last one for today, and it's quite fun. No more geometry. Here's how the story goes. A thousand years ago, six siblings founded a magical school. Ingram, Regalia, and Corona are witches, and Agnard, Ardumo, and Modnar are wizards. A pair of siblings found a house each, and the names of those houses are Rymeth, Madlow, and Demora. All six of them also founded the fourth house, named after their seventh sibling, who went missing when they were young. You are invited to study in the magical school. But as you arrive, you have to be sorted into your house. You have to put your hand on the sorting book and wait for its decision to light up on the cover. When you do it, the book sees potential in you. So instead of sorting you into one of the three houses right away, it gives you an opportunity to get into the fourth house, where the most gifted young magicians go. To prove that you're good enough to be sorted into that house, you have to solve the sorting riddle. The task is to guess the name of the special house, which no one but its students knows. But you have some guidelines that can serve as hints. First, you have to find out who founded which house. Here are some statements. Every house was founded by a brother and a sister. Corona and Regula found Rymouth and Madlow, but not necessarily in this order. Ingram and Ardumo founded Madlow and Demora, but not necessarily in this order. Agnard and Regala founded the same house. Now, after you figure it out, the next step is to guess the name of the secret house. To find it out, find what all siblings have in common. So, are you gifted enough to get sorted into that special house? First, you have to find out who founded which house. So, the pair is always a brother and sister. Let's look at conditions 2 and 3. Each of them mention mad love. Both Corona and Regala are sisters, which means that no matter who founded Madlow, it already has a sister founder. Therefore, Ingram, who is also a witch, couldn't have founded this house. Which means that Madlow was founded by Ardumo, so Ingram founded Damora. Agnard founded the same house with Regala, so it was Modnor who founded Damora with Ingram. Therefore, it only leaves us with Rymouth for Agnar and Regala. Finally, Corona founded Madlow. Okay, great. Now we have to figure out the name of the fifth house. What did the siblings have in common? Of course, all of them have the letter R in their names. Let's put them in the order of appearance of the letter in their names, starting with Regala. Under each of their names, let's put the name of the house they founded. Now, the respective letters under each R form the name Radota. That's the name of their missing sister, and that's what the fourth house is called. So, pal, if you figured it out, congratulations, and welcome home. That's it for today. So, hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.